I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. To another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files, I'm your host Bishop Earl. I appreciate you coming and or tuning in and spending some time with us. I'm really happy to not, today to introduce Rick Wessler. Appreciate you coming, Rick. And, I'm glad uh, to be here. Sharing your story with us. And, and there's so many parallels, it seems like, to you to our stories as we there are. have gone, made this interesting journey. And uh, you have such a rich heritage. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about well, your yeah, background. I'm, I'm a direct descendant of John Taylor. My uh, maternal grandmother's a Taylor. Yeah. And uh, the he Taylors, was with Joseph Smith. Yes, right? he it was in yeah. the Carthage jail with yeah. Joseph Smith. And uh, then the Evans and the Englands, also all, part of your family, also huh? part of the, the the pioneers that came across the plains, and and um, the Wesslers uh, came across the plains too. But my dad was convinced that they might have been chasing the Mormons because they were Catholic, and yet they show up in Everyone. all the places where the the, the church were was, at. was at. My dad started doing genealogy, and all of a sudden he stopped. Wow. And I said, what would you do that for? And he said, well, let me tell you, we had all four legs of our family came across, across the plains, and only three of them were Mormon. <laughs> so he said, I was a little bit afraid to find out more about my, my part <laughs> of the family. <laughs> you brought things down a little bit <laughs> yeah. or something. So you're active in the church, though, and you, you yes. baptized at eight? And... Yeah, my dad uh, converted uh, oh, did at it? 21. He was Catholic. Mm -hmm. But my grandma, the tailor, yeah. uh, wouldn't allow my mom to be married unless it was in oh, the temple. Yeah. So my dad converted from Catholicism and got himself they went, ready to go to the temple. Got himself ready, went to the temple. Which temple was that? Uh, the Salt Lake. Oh, okay. Salt Lake. All right. So you're just active as a young man? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, priesthood I was that? in all the presidencies and uh, yeah. um, got my duty to God award, you know, uh, hiked the Pioneer Trail a couple of times. Did and, you? Seminary? Uh, Did so, you oh, yeah. Seminary? seminary and um, it's a funny story there. I went into seminary my junior year toward the end of the year, and I looked at the board, and it had a list of everybody running for office. And I was running oh, as for the, president. As the president, yeah. And didn't know it. My friends had <laughs> put, you on put it all together. I think as a joke, because yeah. I was, you know, I was a little bit of a wild child. I played in a rock group, and we'd made a few records, and yeah. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I was really good on Sundays, but kind of strayed a little bit during the week. <laughs> Thank goodness, you know, I True could take the sacrament <laughs> and get it all taken care of. Repent and Supposedly, be on, yeah. your, on your way. <laughs> so after school, you... Uh... I, um, my dad said, the bishop wants to talk to you tomorrow. And I said, what did I do? And he said, he wants to talk to you about going on a mission. And he said, don't lie to him because I've told him everything you've been doing. <laughs> And uh, I went in and talked to the bishop, and I was still playing in the band. Mm. Like I said, we'd made a few records. We were d Hoping doing to really do well. well huh? yeah. yeah. And uh, I went and talked to the bishop, and I said, I told him, I said, I've been 
you know, dabbling a little bit with, uh, you know, a few problems with the Word of Wisdom and this type of stuff. And he says, you know how long it takes to repent? And I said, how long? And he said, just like that. So do you want to go? And I said, well, you know, can I let you know tomorrow? And I went out. I'm from Plain City, and our manager lived out there. And we walked. The, I walked the streets all night long, didn't sleep, trying to decide what to do. And yeah. and uh, finally, I felt like it was probably time for me to, you know, get off the fence and jump in the water. So uh, I told him I'd go. Wow. Got a call to Brazil. Yeah. And that was back in the 70s. Okay. Or late 60s. Late 60s. Oh. And. It, it was almost, it, it irritated me a bit because that was way before, you know, they gave the plaques to priesthood. And we were actually instructed to, because I worked up close to the Amazon for my first 10 months, and we were instructed if we saw a, a white child, find out where they live. Follow them oh, home. Follow them home yeah, because so, you couldn't do, you couldn't teach the yeah, blacks. I mean, that, I, that was more like stalking than proselyting, <laughs> but that's what we had to do. And mm -hmm. you couldn't go door to door. You know, you were always going, "Oh, how you doing? Do you know what time it is?" You know, if they were, they didn't want family. you to yeah. to talk to them. And some of the best people I knew when I was in Brazil. In Brazil, you're Brazilian. You're not black or white or purple or Brazilian. green. You're yeah. Brazilian. Yeah. And that's a hard concept for them to understand. And as it was for me, because yeah. there were so many good people. Well, let me ask you, do you feel like you had a testimony of the gospel? The, I mean, the Mormon gospel. Yeah, I never doubted yeah. the, the gospel. Um, as a youth, I decided it was just a little too hard to live it all. But, you know, but I, that was my fault. as you matured and went on your mission. Yeah, that was my had fault. Had a good faith in Je Joseph Smith oh, yeah. and the Book of Mormon. Ne never had a doubt. Yeah, the Book of Mormon, prophets. Book of Mormon, prophets. Yeah. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't dare go against the prophets. My grandma would have hurt me. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I never... Because one of the challenges we have now in our journey here is oftentimes people say, well, you must not have really ever had a testimony. Uh, not true. Uh, I never doubted. Yeah. Never doubted. Um, wow. You come home and get married in the temple, right? Yeah, that's yeah. a funny story, too. I don't know how much time we have, but I, <laughs> my parents had bought a... It goes a, quickly, yeah, but go yeah. ahead. My parents bought a brand new car. This was in 69, and they would bought an Impala. Well, I took it and picked up the guy that played bass in my band. And I said, come on, let's go for a ride. And we went down and around the corner, and there's my wife out washing her Volkswagen. Your future wife. My yeah. future yeah. wife. Yeah. Okay. Out washing her Volkswagen in her bathing suit. And I said, isn't that Janet Wessler? Or, Janet. Yeah, it is now, <laughs> Janet Hansen. And he said, yeah, let's stop and talk to her. And then he invited her to go to the drive-in with us that night. Yeah. And, and then... As we were driving away, he says, oh, I can't go to the drive-in tonight. And I hadn't been released. You know, you usually oh, wait yeah. until the Sunday after. Yeah. I called my state president, and I said, I need to be released. And he says, yeah, we're going to take care of that Sunday. And I said, well, I think it would be better if we took care of it now, because I have a date tonight. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I'm surprised he didn't argue with me more, but I went and met with him and and released he released you. me, and I went on the date, and that was in May, and yeah. we were married in September. Oh my goodness! In the so. Salt Lake Temple, was it? Nope, Logan. Logan That's Temple. where my my uh, wife's parents okay. had been married. So, and then after that, you're just active. Your elders' quorum active, presidencies yeah. and high priest presidencies. Yeah, you know, you were in a bishop I was I in a bishop break. I, and then I taught gospel doctrine for almost thirteen years. Wow. And uh, I well, wouldn't what get did in. you think about Jesus at this point? I mean, what did you think? Well, of him? I thought I believed in Jesus at that point. Yeah. At that point, I thought I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. I mean, you know, like they're quick to tell you the Church of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Of Latter Day Saints, <laughs> and uh, you know, I didn't know any better. Now, thinking back, and we always ask this usually after you've. Come Christian, but what did you think of the cross as a Mormon? Uh, I I thought it was evil. Yeah, I or, thought it or was at least evil. 
very strange, and huh? And I'll tell you, once, once I found the, the truth, I couldn't wait to buy one. <laughs> Isn't that I couldn't. I mean, I just felt compelled yeah. to buy one. Grace? And, oh. What did you think of Grace? Grace? As a, I as didn't a understand. No. Oh, as a Mormon? Yeah, as a Mormon. I thought, well, that's what, you know, kept me from being the, the model child as a youth. I, I knew I couldn't do that stuff. Oh. And, you know, it wasn't until later I realized I couldn't do it as an adult either. <laughs> and, you know, I wasn't a sinner. You know, yeah. I, I wasn't perfect. But you feel I wasn't like we were a playing a game, or I mean, looking we were just back, going through the motions. Looking or? back, yeah, I do. I, I, and I honestly, in all fairness to to the Mormons, I, they don't realize it. They don't, yeah. they don't get it. Yeah. They don't know they're playing a game, and it's hard to win a game when you don't know you're playing. Well, yeah, and 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 you and you have all these rules to follow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so tell us what kind of happens in life. Uh, you're well, going I'll, along. I'm going to go back to the temple. Sure. The, the, I went to the temple the first time before Your mission. I, I went yeah. on my mission. Yeah. And um, I went, when I got married, and I went a lot of times after that. But I never felt comfortable in the temple. Felt the spirit, did no. you? Never felt comfortable. I didn't I've feel comfortable, so and say. I was so worried about what to do when and where to put what and when to say what I, and all yeah, that. Yeah, I and it got to the point where, you know, I just did. You, I just I didn't like it. Did it seem godlike? No. Yeah. I, I, you know, God's there. And and Jesus is you know oh, yeah. the they come, they the FedEx there. guy yeah. you know <laughs> and uh, so they're there but uh, and you think you know them and you think that they're they're involved but why you know so you must have gone through the stuff. temple before the changes oh I did yes yeah. sixty eight did you notice the changes then a absolutely yeah and that was the last time I went oh was it yeah. Thought, well, yeah, and I had hired a driver. I retired from UTA, and I was an operations supervisor. And I hired a driver that was a 32nd degree Mason. Oh, oh, oh And boy. we got to be really good friends, and I'm quite the movie buff. Now, he was an LDS then? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm quite the movie buff, and this was about the time, uh, uh, what is it, National Treasure? Came yeah, out yeah, yeah. with all the Mason signs right, and stuff right. that they're following. And he said, so, he said, do you do your Morsonic temple work? Morsonic. <laughs> and I said, what? And he said, do you, he said I'm going to bring you a book tomorrow and let you read it. And he brought me a book. And, and in that book, he had highlighted a chapter that went through their ceremony. And if I hadn't known better... I'd have thought somebody was divulging secrets about From the, temple. the LDS temple. I was blown Blue away, too. I, I looked on the Internet under Masonry. Mm -hmm. And when you look up there, it's got the fi um, five points, and yeah. it's got the handshakes <clears throat> and, the, and the ways of taking <clears throat> life and everything. Yeah, I, and I know, you know, a lot of your, your people that you interview talk about putting stuff on a shelf. Yeah. I did things a little different. You know, I had kind of like a Band-Aid system. <laughs> um, you know, when I found out about that, I thought, ooh, you know, ouch. But I put, I put a Band-Aid on it, but it was always oh, there to remind That's a good analogy. Me. And then after I went out of the church and started finding out the big things, it was, oh, I broke my arm. I need a cast. And finally I was in a full body cast, and then I was dead. And, and you know, I, I told you, I think everybody goes through a step that we don't talk about a whole lot. What's and that? I was a died again Mormon. A died again. A died again Mormon before I was born again Christian. And the sad thing is, a lot of people that go through that stage, they don't have God or or uh, Christ to fall back on, so yeah. they end up agnostic or atheist. Even atheist. But um, well, that's excellent because I think that's one of our challenges, and the goal of this show is to hopefully encourage people to make that transition oh, yeah. because it's worth it. Yeah. And to uh, to study the Bible and find out who yeah. Jesus is and about grace and the cross oh, and yeah. everything. And I mean it's so it's not really um, 
you know, it's not really, uh, what I call it is mind control. Yeah. Um, and it starts, you know, when you're in primary. Oh, and, and repetition and uh, yeah. testimony. And, you know, when, when I found out I was a descendant of John Taylor, you know, you know, I thought I was proud before that, but, you know, I was probably <laughs> a bit really obnoxious <laughs> after that. Yeah. Well, something happened about eight years ago. Tell us about that. Yeah, I'm in the, right at the end of, I, I had been teaching gospel doctrine, yeah. I told you, for like almost 13 years. Wow. And I'm teaching a lesson on temple worthiness. And I had made a list on the board of several things that are you had required. You the class tell you what was required. Yeah, and yeah, you wrote what's them required, down and, yeah. They all knew. Yeah, yeah oh, sure. And uh, I, I get, I write that down and I'm looking at it. And, you know, it's kind of like anybody that's played softball. With those you know, metal bats. With the metal bat. <laughs> yeah. When the bat hits the ball, you hear this ping, you yeah. know. And that happened. And, and I just heard enough. The word enough? Yeah, enough. I'd done enough. I, you know, I regret how many people came up and told me how my lessons had really helped them because now I know I wasn't really helping them. But... Um, I looked at that board and I looked at those things and I turned around and I said, any questions? Okay, we'll so-and-so say the closing prayer. And I walked out and I've never been back. And I got home and I told my wife, I said, I, I have to ask to be released. And she said, why? No, you're 100% active. I'm 100% active. I had no doubt in my mind whatsoever. Oh my goodness. And I hear that ping. And I, I go home and I tell my wife, I, I have to be released. You knew exactly what the word enough meant. Yes. Yes. E enough. You know, enough of this. Yeah. Enough of conditions. And uh, she said, why? Yeah. You know, people love your lessons. And I, I said, I'm not teaching about the God that I believe in. Wow. My God loves unconditionally. And every week for almost 13 years, I've taught about a condition on that love. And today I had a bunch of them. And I, it's enough. I can't do it anymore. And so I said, I'm going to ask the bishop to be released. And I did. And he asked me why, and I told him. Yeah. And he said, oh, we believe in God. We believe in Christ. And I said, Something, no, something's some, wrong. Some, something's, something's wrong. wrong. Because my God loves unconditionally, and, and all we ever hear about in here are conditions, conditions. on that unconditional Isn't it love. interesting how, I mean, we probably know that our whole LDS life, and yet some something just I said didn't. to your heart, God, and God you just know, talked I, to you. I had taught a lesson on temple worthiness. For 12 years, because yeah. you have one every year. At least year. every third or fourth year. It doesn't matter what book year. you're studying, the lessons are all the same. Yeah. And Isn't that why amazing? all of a sudden, bonk, you know? God knew it was your God time. God knew. Yeah. God knew. So you end up, uh, now for a period of seven years or so, you go through kind of a float yeah, I didn't, floating I didn't, along. I, and I, I knew the Mormon church wasn't right because they didn't know God and my God. Yeah. And I didn't ever leave God or Christ. You just didn't go to church. I had church. that belief, but I just go didn't go to church. And then I went to Cincinnati. Now, I flew was this to, just a year or so ago? Uh, six years ago, I flew to Cincinnati okay. to help my kids drive back. Okay. And while I was there, they said, you got to come to church with us, Dad. And they went to the vineyard there in Cincinnati. A non-denominational church. Non-denominational Christian church. And, what and did I, you think of that? I was, I, I loved it because... I, you know, I had a musical had a music background. background yeah. I was a professional mu musician and a recording artist, and I walked in and saw that band, and I thought, honey, I'm home, you know. <laughs> and uh, then they played the music, and I loved to sing. I just, I, yeah. you know, I loved to sing, and I couldn't. I could not sing those words. You were, I, you were just crying. Yeah. That's what happened to us the yeah. first time. Uh, and it was all about Jesus, right? Oh, yeah. Nothing everything, about praising the man or anything. Everything, everything. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny, but that, that planted the seed. And I thought, boy, those, they've got, we even found a vineyard church here in Salt Lake yeah. for a while. Yeah. Um, real small. I mean, there were like 1,500, 2,000 people at that meeting. In Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah I felt like I was at the tabernacle at conference. <laughs> and 
then we found the one in Salt Lake and it had like 30, 30 people and it was good and the message was the same but it was you know got to be a pain driving back and forth yeah, so you're north uh, up there so. then a year ago my youngest daughter said dad you got to come with us to uh, church and they were going to it's called the genesis project in ogden you know, okay i walked in much smaller basis but the band the and the music and i still couldn't sing it still can't to it's this still, day still i've just re, you know i've resolved myself the fact that i get to read the words and i'm not going to be able to sing and well it's such a glorious message uh, and praising jesus yeah, that we never grace. knew yeah well anyway i had some huge questions so i made an appointment with pastor matt matt roberts and he is fantastic and i went in and i said okay First, you need to tell me what Bible I ought to read. Then you need to tell me um, what this grace is all about. Yeah. And what was the third one? Trinity. Oh, yeah. All about the Trinity. I don't Godhead. understand the Godhead. Yeah. So he said, get you an NASB Bible and read In the Grip of Grace by Max Lucado. And then we'll meet again. And you gave me that book. And I did. I've read I gave it, you that and book. it is so full of nuggets. Uh, it's just unbelievable. I mean, it, it explains not only the path that the Mormons are on, but anybody that's in an organized, structured yeah. religion or bondage, as I yeah. refer to it now. And, you know, I wanted to talk about the the shepherd sheep herder thing. I've got a note here. I want you to tell that, I, that your thought on I that. Thought you know, I had been told a long time ago there's a difference between a shepherd and a sheep herder. And a shepherd goes out in front and leads, and the shepherd is behind pushing. Sheep herder. Sheep herder, yeah. yeah. The sheep herder's behind pushing. And I said, you know, it's got to the point where all these guys in the big building in Salt Lake are pushing so hard, mm -hmm. they're pushing the sheep, sheep so herders. hard and fast yeah. that they've run over the shepherd. Oh my goodness. And um, th there's such a huge difference between... What a wonderful analogy. Or following Jesus, or are you being driven by the sheep herders? Exactly. You're, you're trying, you think you're following Jesus, but the sheep herders are running you over him. And, uh, I like that. That's you know, I, I say now, as uh, a Christian, I know God, and I know uh, Jesus Christ. As a Mormon, I knew of God, and I knew of Jesus Christ, but I didn't know him. That's such a significant thing. But I knew difference. that they weren't there, Yeah. because that's what took me. And I didn't find out all these other nuggets, you know, <laughs> until after I left the church. And, and, and there's so many me. of them, aren't there? That but... helped me to justify, you know, the polygamy, polyandry, the book of Abraham. Um, God, there's so I many. Know, Joseph Smith translation. Joseph Smith, and, and, and uh, even, you know, the Carthage jail, I go like a lamb to the slaughter. And oh, well, John Taylor was there. Like John said, Taylor was him. there, and he said, he's, he's the one that wrote the record about the hidden, the smuggled Got pistol. That Joseph had, yeah. Yeah. And after I came back from the Carthage jail as a youth, we'd do trips every year. Yeah. As I came back, uh, I talked about that, and, and Grandma says, you know, your ancestor says it wasn't like a lamb to the slaughter. It was more like Wyatt Earp at the O.K. Corral. <laughs> <laughs> and that was coming from a tailor, yeah. you know. And, and if he had had probably more bullets and more guns, he would have been oh, using yeah. them. So. He, uh, well, according to John Taylor, he fired six times, but only a couple uh, of them. three of them went off. And uh, what I, from what I've read, you know, two people were killed and one was injured. Yeah. And I mean, land of the slaughter. You yeah. Know? Not quite. Uh, he was, it was quite the image was of getting Jesus. Who was slaughtered and who was the lamb? You yeah. know, was the thing. But now the Bible, I guess, means uh, something everything, totally different, everything, doesn't it? Everything. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't. You're taught not to trust the Bible, but um, now, you know, as I read the Word, yeah, I, I, it just reinforces all the things I found out from Sean and and from your programs have justified 
the move that I made. Yeah, I have a loyal listener here. Oh, I yeah. appreciate you so much. Yeah, I recommend <laughs> to anybody who watch the archives because, you know, I've seen them all. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I learned something from everyone. But there's, and I think this message that you're giving is, is such a glorious one because we, we are in the church. We're faithful. We have testimonies. We do feel like we have the Holy Spirit, I, the Holy Ghost. And, and I never doubted the church until the day I heard that pink enough. And all of a sudden it was just like... Okay. I was 60 years old. But you old. were open, I guess, at that point to... to to start learning. Okay. And I guess the reason it felt like he used a bat is because I had such a hard head. It <laughs> took 60 years to get it through to me. But, um, you know, from that point on, I knew. Yeah. So now explain what you understand about grace. Oh. Grace is an undeserved gift. And I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We're Everybody's sinners. a sinner. Yeah. Thomas Monson's a sinner. You tell that to a Mormon, you're going to get stoned. But it's true. Yeah. And the, the sad thing about it is they don't think they are. And we're actually saved by Christ's righteousness, oh, yeah. not our own efforts. That's why this means so much to me now. Yeah, it's what um, Jesus did on the cross. That's where it all happened. That's where it was yeah. finished. Yeah. And uh, everything I've done, am doing, and will do is covered. As is, long as I, you know, believe in him and, and follow him and show love to my fellow men. Doesn't this help explain the odd feeling you had in the temple? Yes. Oh, there's a lot of things as I look back that, you know, should have, have yeah. uh, made sense yeah. um, or caused doubt. But I didn't have you, one day You just had an arm full of Band-Aids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Band-Aids, a couple of casts. <laughs> And and then the polygamy polyandry, that put me in a full body cast. And yeah. That was just before I died, so... And, and now the church seems to be trying to put out essays and trying to, oh, yeah. because there's so many people yeah. that are and you coming know, to this truth. And you know that for every one of those essays they put out, they've already figured out a response to, to yeah. counteract How it. To explain. Yeah. Well, Rick, our time's actually all nah. gone. Is there something you'd like to say to your family, friends? Uh, <laughs> Read the word, you know. Uh, with new eyes. And when I was told that, I even went and bought me, a, I buy dollar glasses at all a dollar. I even went and bought a new pair of glasses so, so just be, to read the they Bible. They wouldn't be tainted. Huh? Yeah, it wouldn't be tainted. <laughs> and read that and get the book In the Grip of Grace by Max Licato. And you can, you can study your own material and find out that you're following a farce. Well, Rick, thanks so much. Appreciate you coming oh, and sharing your pleasure. story. And my pleasure. You've got a wonderful family, and uh, appreciate you sharing. I'm sure that some somebody's going to be influenced. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.